Why were you hesitant about taking the medications? Because I knew that going on biologics increases your risk of Hodgkin's lymphoma. You know, all these things. I knew that they all have side effects. And I knew that the side effects of prednisone were, were brutal. And I was like, I was trying to resist all of this. So yeah, I, I was just, I, I, I didn't want to have to become one of those patients on a ton of meds and you're on them forever. And I just felt like that was the end of my life. It was very humbling to be educated as a physician that my knowledge wasn't help. My knowledge of the way I thought a lot of things wasn't helping me. It's been now six months off medication. Mm -hmm. And I've been on my ALDA since 2008. I would describe that uh, eating raw carrots has made me like laugh out loud. Even since I was a kid, I could never eat apples. Like apples always gave me diarrhea, always in pears. And today, like I, I'm eating apples and pears and it's just, it, I'm sitting going, this is impossible. Oh, this is low FODMAP. And you're like, yeah, your microbiome is so different now that it's not an issue. And it's funny because I, I have a massive smoothie every day, which mm -hmm. I never thought the volume of my smoothie is like a liter plus. And I, when I would watch you all, I'm like, there's no way I'm going to have to take a liter down. And you're like, oh, you can. When I talked to the, to the GI docs about what I was experiencing, how I was incontinent and I had mucus issues, and they said to me, and I went to like five different GI docs, and they said, you need to learn to live with this. Yeah. and you have scar tissue there, you're going to be incontinent. And there was a sense of like, this can't be right. As compared to losing your colon and other issues like this that are so extreme, you only have one colon ever. And to give this a try, to just say, like, why not a year, six months to a year, not that it'll ever be that long of like, let me try this because if this works, I get my life back. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of IBD Heal, a podcast brought to you by High Carb Health. I'm your host Shakul and today I'm joined by a very special guest, Dr. T. Welcome to the show. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, thanks. Oh, it's a pleasure, pleasure to be here. Um, so I'm Dr. T. I'm a medical doctor in the US and uh, I've had ulcerative colitis for, had ulcerative colitis for 15 years and uh Thanks to working with you and this program, uh, it's very surreal for me that I'm medication free and feel like I did many, many years ago before this all happened. So again, great to be here. Yeah, this is this is one episode that we're very excited to share with you because obviously Dr. T is uh, is practicing medicine in the U.S. and he has been working with us for a little while now and we're going to go through his whole story but what we want to start off with is talking about how does it feel I mean, you had this for 15 years so that's a long time it's a long time of your life to be you know we've talked about this a lot in our meetings about how much of your life this has taken up and what is it like to have gotten rid of ulcerative colitis so it's really an amazing question because i think after so many years it it's almost a, becomes ingrained. And so for me, not having to run to the bathroom and not that there isn't a bit of like PTSD, but I have to remind myself that like, there's no rush, everything's fine. And it's, it's, uh, it feels like being let out of prison. It's really very surreal. And it keeps me like smiling all the time. So grateful. Really, it's un unbelievable. And can you compare your life even before colitis, but just talk about some of the things that you had to go through in those 15 years compared to what life is like now for you? Oh my goodness. It, it was a very, very challenging 15 years. Uh, I mean, how should I put it? I, I was having accidents all the time and had to wear protection all the time. And Honestly, I remember when it was at its worst, I remember just, I couldn't even walk like four feet without having an accident. And I remember I was crying. I was like, I kept almost saying like, why is this so, I just, I was like, why are, I was also trying to talk to my body. I'm like, why are you so angry? It just was so, just, I, I, I 
it was like indescribable the the how what was happening it was just uh you know i couldn't i couldn't move like uh, my life became so small you know from trying to live a life to like walking four feet i remember walking with my son who was like four and we were at walmart and i was like i've got to run to the bathroom and he was all confused and i said i don't i we have to go right now like i don't have a choice you know and he was like what's wrong and i was like oh it was just very challenging yeah it was yeah yeah i don't have words people that have this know how brutal it is yeah absolutely and and compare that to the, the last i think you know nine to six to nine months that you've right. been sent to a medication free how do you feel and you mentioned your son and we've had a few discussions around what you've been able to do with your son recently it's just night well, and day well to be able to to go on a flight and to go visit him and to not have to always like i need the aisle seat because i need to be lined to the bathroom and to not have to worry about protection just so so freeing like the world just feels so much larger I'm, i can't even it's very like i even turned to him and i said how surreal is this and he's like i know i'm like yeah i said i we would like we went walking like all day around where he was and i said i haven't had to ask you where the bathroom is once have i he's like yeah it's really weird i'm like i know very very strange 15 years is a long time yeah, and so he's probably felt he's probably known that's all he's known about you for his yeah. whole life. Yeah. Oh yeah, wow, oh, no. that... yeah. At one point, he turned to me. He goes, "Hey, can we go go down, you know, to the stadium and go watch a game?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure. Let's just do it. Like, let's get in the car and go with no planning. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's impossible." Yeah, very weird. Amazing. Yeah. So as you can see, guys, this is, this is life changing stuff, and. Dr. T has has transformed before my eyes. I've been working with him for a little while. We'll talk about how this all started with with um with him, but uh it's been quite an amazing journey to see what he's where he's come from to where he is now and and the change in him has has just been fascinating for me to see. But let's go to the beginning, Dr. T, sure. and let's talk about how this started for you. And as a medical professional, how must it have felt to have been given the diagnosis? So let's start with the symptoms that you initially experienced, and then we'll go through the diagnosis and what happened from there. Sure. And, you know, please stop me at any point. So this all started in 2008. And I was going through a really stressful time in my life. And all of a sudden, I just had this sort of cramp and I had to go to the bathroom and then every 15 minutes after that, it just didn't stop. So I was going like 40 times a day and it was just pouring out of me. And I was like, this isn't right. Like as a physician, I'm like, what is going on? And I immediately went to a GI doc and he's like, we need to scope you. And I was like, oh my goodness. And he scoped me and he said, you have pan colitis and basically said, we need to put you on everything. We need to put you on biologics. We need to put you on like, you name it, you got to go on it. And I, I was at, even at that time I resisted and I didn't want to go on prednisone. And I just, so the, what the, 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 the doc goes, well, we'll put you on Zyfaxin and Zyfaxin mm. is used for traveler's diarrhea. And I said, fine. Can I interrupt you for a second there, Dr. T? Uh, why were you hesitant about taking the medications? Because I knew that going on biologics increases your risk of Hodgkin's lymphoma. You know, all these things. I knew that they all have side effects. And I knew that the side effects of prednisone were, were brutal. And I was like, I was trying to resist all of this. So, yeah, I, I was just... I. I I didn't want to have to become one of those patients on a ton of meds and you're on them forever. And I just felt like that was the end of my life. And so I was calling all these physicians that I went to medical school with and they all were like, yep, you know, and uh, I was completely, 
I was completely incontinent. Like it was that bad. Like it, I, it was just, it was a disaster. Like I couldn't, I, I couldn't hold it for a moment. And um, I finally gave up when it wasn't getting any better after six months. And I went on a, a course of prednisone that finally just cut the numbers down to a much more, I mean, oh, and at the same time, I was having to do the the prednisone, uh, the prednisone and the mesalamine enemas. Like it was all, then it was just me, mesalamine, prednisone, enemas. My God, the enemas, that was such, just not even being able to hold an enema, everything. It was just brutal. And then honestly getting severe uh, thrombotic, you know, uh, thrombosed hemorrhoids from all of this. They got a fecal calprotectin. It was like 400 and it was just... You know, it was, it was, the whole thing was just so, I, like, all of a sudden my, this was my entire life was this, mm -hmm. you know, anyway, so that's, so, and my diet consisted of basically, cause I didn't know what to do. I basically my diet, as much as it sounds crazy was tuna fish, bananas, and bagels. Cause I thought somehow that was going to make it better. Mm -hmm. And, and just the mucus pouring out of me the whole anyway i thought somehow that was you know bread was simple and tuna fish was basic you know i thought like oh it's really simple stuff mm. and then just to give you a quick sense at that point i was like let me try this probiotic called vsl3 it was like the super powerful probiotic and then i tried the scd diet and nothing and then it quieted down again and then i was like oh well, i've lost some weight i better get more protein and I started eating a ton of eggs and it just roared back like a, I can't even, I, I was like, oh, I must've brought on that. And I, I knew enough to see like, clearly the eggs brought that on. And it was just, and then I tried to do some research that it was the, uh, that it was the sulfa in the eggs. And I was like, food is so confusing right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm giving a flavor of that's what it was like. And I can hold there for a moment, but that's, like the battle was on and that was, I was trying to mm -hmm. tackle and it just. Ooh. So take us through the years between sure. when you were diagnosed just briefly between 2008 and I think 2021 or 22 when you, when you got sure. hold of well, so, our, our work and, and what you went through and what you tried and the different medications I, that you were given. Sure. So in a nutshell, I tried some pretty intense things. Um, I went to this clinic and they said, we can fix this. And it was echoing of a bit of this program, but it was all about buying their supplements, not eating for a week straight. And the stress of all that made me lose a tremendous amount of weight and then flare again. Mm. So I was, I was hopeful. And then and I finally dropped out of that program, which was, again, echoes of the right idea, but the wrong implementation for me completely. And I then read some articles and I tried something very non-traditional with some doctor's support is I tried no, something known as hyperbaric oxygen therapy, mm -hmm. which was a very surreal experience and had the right idea because in a way I got better, but it was brutal. And I had rhabdomyolysis and was urinating blood and whatever it was, it was clearly this echo of there's, there's gotta be a way if clearly just getting oxygen into my colon was causing this something there's, there's, it's almost like the truth was there, but I couldn't figure it out yet. Um, mm. And at that point, my life really consisted of eating banana, bananas and potatoes, rice protein powder, and massive amounts of sunflower butter because hmm. I thought I needed my protein. And uh, I thought, I, and I managed to just be on relatively low dose Lyalda, and I thought I was doing pretty well. And I got scoped at, uh, I think it was around December of 2020. And he said, you still have ulcers throughout your colon. I had to biopsy a lesion and I don't think it was cancerous. And at that point, he's like, we have a choice. Either you let go now and go back, start on biologics, or you need to go on max dose of the mesalamine 
and we need to scope you right away. And I said, well, wait, wait, what if we just use the fecal calprotectin as a proxy for that? And when I would, the, my fecal calprotectin on max dose of Lyalda would start to come down into the normal range. But as soon as I started to ease off on the, on the Lyalda, the fecal calprotectin would shoot way back up again. Mm. And then just in a nutshell, that takes us to, you know, where uh, I ended up getting COVID and noticed some heart issues. And then I was like, there's a rare chance that, that mesalamine can also affect your heart. So I said, I need to stop all my meds. And I said, if I'm going to stop all my meds, I've got to find a solution mm. because I, I, and that's when I finally through reading and discussing found you all. Mm. And so you all caught me at the mm. a brutal time in my life, which is I was immediately stopping all the meds, not ready for anything, getting over COVID. And mm. you know, I dropped this on your lap to try to help me. And it was a rough time. That was a rough mm. intro. Yeah, absolutely. So I, 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 believe, I, I believe also you had some complications after taking the COVID vaccine as well, didn't you? Yeah, it's all been a challenge in terms of my heart rate and yes it's been it's it's been challenging it, it has been a, a very uh fascinating journey to say the least absolutely definitely so talk about there's a few things i want to discuss with you about you know when you decided to contact us and you found out about us what were your initial thoughts when you saw some of the work we were doing and then i want you to discuss your first conversation with Shamiz when you when you were thinking about starting sure <clears throat> i remember watching the testimonials and going this is doable i'm going to be the exception but this appears to really finally be the answer i i, I just it 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 seemed like this it all kind of made sense you know why the other things hadn't worked um, but again, there was this sense of like, yeah, but there's no, like, yeah, sure. I'm sure it'll work for mild UC, but not for a, a long one like me for 15 years. And, you know, so, and again, the discussion I had, you know, with Shamiz was great. And, and, uh, it, I guess the takeaway was this wasn't going to be easy, but it never is, but I'm like, but that it, it was doable. Mm. And so that, like, okay. Like, and I, and again, I think, I think that's the takeaway, at least by the way, just to sort of riff on this, that this wasn't an instant cure. Like, no, this is not. And I think it's almost like, no, this isn't a diet plan. This mm. is a life change, mm. but at least it was a target to aim for. But I knew that, that, that book alone, I'm like, I, I, I need support to do this. No doubt. Absolutely. Yeah, hundred percent. And so let's let's talk about. Okay, so you decided that this was the way that you wanted to go about tackling your issue. And right. as as a as a physician, as a medical doctor, when you got some of the information, how did it? How did some of that information tie into some of the things that you'd learned? And and what about some of the other things that maybe made you kind of sit up and go, "Whoa, what's this all about?" It's amazing how much education I had lacked where, and we had many discussions about the, my conception about, and this, the country's obsession with protein intake. And I remember listening and talking to you all and this not even hesitating when you're like, stop your protein powder. Cause mm -hmm. I wasn't essentially not eating meat already. And you're like, you're you're doing protein powder and you're doing a tremendous amount of roasted nut roasted nuts. And I was like, Oh yeah, but this is, this is incredibly healthy. And as a physician thinking that, and you're like, that doesn't really sound healthy to me, you know? And as I read all the stuff, I'm like, Oh my God, you're right. You know, who said like having a rice, pro rice protein powder is a natural food. So that's where I had to rethink what I thought of is like, my body needs this most protein. And there was a sense, as my shrink would say, like, you've done it this way for how many years and how's that mm -hmm. working for, you know? So again, I describe it that you all 
it was very humbling to be educated as a physician that my knowledge wasn't help. My knowledge of the way I thought a lot of things wasn't helping me. Mm. So that's quite an interesting reflection. Mm. Yeah, I had some right ideas that I'm. I'm like, clearly this has to do with something in my gut. Like clearly between the hyperbarics mm. and what you're on. Clearly, this has to do. When most physicians say you can eat whatever you want, just eat a healthy diet. Food doesn't impact this. And reading all the materials and going, no, 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 food has to have an impact on this, you know. But clearly, I hadn't solved the puzzle. I'm like, I, but you all seem to have solved it. And I was like, well, I don't know what I, I, I was like, but I'm already doing everything right. And you're, and what was bizarre for me, and I, we can come back to this later. But as soon as I stopped, the day after I stopped the rice protein powder, and the sunflower butter. I started to feel very strange. And I was like, this doesn't make any sense. And you all are like, yes, it does. You know what I mean? Like, and therefore I was like, okay, you guys think so. I'm, I, I trust you guys on this. And, yeah, well, and one last comment is, hmm. uh, I guess a few months before I stopped eating bread because I had just read that you can actually, there's a lot of issues around this. And I stopped bread and it was torture. Like I literally went to the ER because I felt so awful and they're like, I, I thought I was going dying and it was like a withdrawal. So I'm just saying all these things that I'm like, I had no idea what I was really doing to myself. Mm. I know it's a lot, but it's been so surreal. Yeah. You've been through, you've been through a, I mean, a, the, the, bra the brat a diet, a serious journey. People, when you have some sort of inflammation, you do bananas, mm. rice, toast, you know, yeah. and yeah. Uh, it's bread. I'm like, oh, bread can't be bad. Yeah. I mean, you're told to eat all the white stuff, aren't you? When you have, right. you know, yeah. Right. It's, it's, it's less stress on your colon. And, and it's not saying, oh, that stuff is evil forever. And we can talk about that. But in this current state that my body was in, bread wasn't helping. Clearly. Anyway, so that's what it was very surreal. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the other thing I want you to discuss with the audience is the information you get about how the body heals, the physiology of how the body heals. I want you to talk about that a little bit from from medical perspective, what we talk about, you know, when we're talking about how there are certain toxins released. And, and there's a lot of research regarding this that has been coming and it's growing too around when you eat certain animal proteins that it, it putrefies in your bowel and, and releases this toxic gas called hydrogen sulfide, which creates endotoxins in your gut. And, you know, talk to, you know, from, from someone who's a, you know, you obviously to become a doctor, you need to have a certain level of understanding of research. So talk, talk to uh, the audience about what you learned around the physiology of how the body heals. It's a big okay. one. <laughs> So in Western medicine, won't, most doctors won't argue with the fact that normally when you have an injury, the body will heal. When you have a cut, it will heal. And in general, for most things in general, physicians agree, don't do things to impede the healing process. So if you get a cut, we wouldn't have people like you know, pour acid on it or, you know, rub it intensely. It's sort of like the, the message we would usually tell patients is keep it clean and leave it alone. And in a way we say that, but when it comes to other things, that's not always the case. So I guess what I'm getting at is there is this idea that the body can heal itself but of course, the med Western medicine believes that's true for certain things, but especially, of course, not for autoimmune diseases. Like there's never an agreement that, oh, autoimmune, like by definition, autoimmune, he the conception is autoimmune diseases will not heal themselves. It's an autoimmune and the body is attacking itself and we have to stop the body from attacking itself. But that's why if someone's got gastritis because they drank alcohol, we're like, um, don't like do spicy food for a day, like give your 
give the, the surface some time. Don't keep irritating it. Don't keep, you know, let, let the, give the body space to heal itself, you know, and there's, and there is some basic agreement, of course, that for example, a fever isn't awful. Like a mm. low grade fever is actually designed to denature the viral proteins, which allow the immune system to kill that faster. Because initially it was like, oh, immediately you have a fever, take Tylenol. And now we, at least Western medicine says, only take Tylenol when you have a very high fever and you're at a risk for dehydration and other major complications. But that a low grade fever is not a bad thing. And in a way you all will smile because you're like, yeah, the body is smart and it's trying to already heal itself. Stop stopping, stop stopping that, you know, let it do what it wants. So does that sort of get to what you're getting at a bit? Yeah, and and that's something we talk about a lot when you when you first start the program. We go through the ed education. We say the body heals the same on the inside as it does on the outside, but the cause is different, right? When you got when you got damage on the outside, there's a physical damage. When you got damage on the inside, there's a toxic damage. But the same message applies. And I, I like how you said, you know, keep it clean and leave it alone, because that's been our message for what to do with the inside of the body since we started working with people on this is you want to keep the internal env environment clean and leave it alone. And if you can do that, you, just like the body heals on the outside, it can heal on the inside. And, and obviously you achieved it um, by doing that and following that process. No, it's it's been very challenging to sort of sense make a lot of this. So mm. in terms of in terms of what the body goes through when it is healing, and that's very different than what we talked about in Western medicine. Mm -hmm. you know? Yes, I yes, think that's, have... that's something we can touch on as well, because it's part of the, what we're discussing around how does the body heal? And in terms of the way the medical system thinks about certain symptoms, we have a completely different um, explanation of what these symptoms are. And so maybe you can talk about that too. That is so difficult and mind-blowing as a physician that you, I, I would go, oh, I think I'm going to flare. And you're like, you're misinterpreting this. And to not see, it was so challenging when you're like, you stop saying it's a flare. This is your body doing what it needs to do right now. Mm. But I immediately go to the worst place possible. Like, oh my God, this is a flare. I need prednisone. And your perspective is just be patient. This takes time. You had 15 years of damage. Like, be patient. And that's physicians are not the best physicians are the worst <laughs> patients. I'll admit that in a heartbeat. You know, so um, yeah, absolutely. Just and really as a physician, it was so mind-bending when I started having what you would describe as detox symptoms. And I kept saying mm, and overanalyzing. Yeah, and healing like this makes no sense. Hmm. I don't understand. I can't make sense of this. And you're like, re look at read the book again. And he goes over all of these. And I, I just had to have faith. And I'm like, okay, you know, and we can talk more about that, but it just so, so surreal. Or a reframing of how to see everything. Absolutely. Because you know, when, when you go to a doctor and you've got certain symptoms, they're automatically seen as this is a bad thing that's happening and, and we need to stop that. Whereas, as we talked about, you know, we always like to think about how does this make sense in terms of logic, right? So when you when you fall over and you get hurt, as the body's healing, it doesn't feel good. Right. Right? And we know that and we accept that because we understand that's a healing process. However... When the body is healing from the inside and it doesn't feel good and there's some normal healing symptoms that are going on, we can't seem to accept that. And primarily because we don't understand what's happening. Mm -hmm. uh, but talk about that because you, you are going to talk a little bit about your detox process or your healing process. I, you know, I think we're tr I'm trying to reframe from detox to healing because detox comes with a with particular connotation I around. There's a lot of detox programs and things like that around. And yeah, um I think if we kind of talk about detox slash healing that the body's trying to undergo and um, when we get symptoms, 
it is really a process of healing that is happening. And I want you to describe your experience of going through the the healing slash detox process. Sure. And I'm really glad, you know, sometimes, as you said, you look back and everything kind of that there was a way that life unfolded. Hmm. I'm glad I did the hyperbarics because that was my first glimpse into thinking about things differently. Because when I did the hyperbarics, this was not giving myself an infusion of bizarre medications. It was just high level oxygen. And what the oxygen was doing in this one case was killing anaerobic bacteria that shouldn't have been in my colon. And it was lysing those bacteria. It was just with oxygen, for goodness sake. It it was essentially trying, as you would say, to do healing, but in a very non-natural way, like incredible amounts of oxygen being forced under incredible amounts of pressure. And I remember having fever and chills. And I was like, why should I have fever and chills from just getting some oxygen? And it was because, as you would say, things were in my body that needed to not be in my body. And as they were dying and being killed, they were releasing endotoxin in this case, and I was feeling awful. Mm-hmm. And so I, and so therefore, I was mentally like, okay, be ready for something that won't be expected. And I remember as soon as I stopped the rice protein powder and the sunflower butter, the next day I started to have chills and I was cold and I was shaking and I, I would have intense fatigue for an hour and then I would feel fine again. And then it was intense fatigue for another hour. And I was like, it's like I'm having the flu. And it, But it was that. And again, that's the normal body's. But what's amazing is, yeah, there's a normal physiologic response that isn't the virus. But when the body gets a virus, this is really all these cofactors that are the body's activating that give you fatigue, nausea, chills. It's how the body wants you to stop running around, save energy and get into a healing mode in a sense. Like that's your body, like building up things and, and fighting off something. And so it was so surreal. And I I would write down the list and I would sit there going, Oh, I'm having X. I was like, what? Oh, it's like, I thought that literally there was something wrong with me. It's completely separate from just what I was going through. Cause I'm like, I'm having the worst head. Oh, it's a headache. You know? And I was like, instead of freaking out about the headache, I'm like, you're going to have funky stuff. So I'll just give you a sense. Can I just list briefly the kind of things I experienced or do you want to wait on that? Yeah, yeah, you can do that. So intense, short-lived fatigue that is not just like I had a long day. It was like, I'm going to pass out, you know, (laughs) and then literally fall asleep for like 30 minutes and then feel like I'm okay again. So these intense waves of fatigue, nausea, chills, headaches, scalp acne, um, sore throat, um, congestion, um, abdominal cramping, uh, weird sleeping, even discomfort when I urinated. And I was like, this, <laughs> I just, it was almost like made me laugh how I kept going, why is this? Oh, it's, it's a like your body's choosing this way to help the process. So, and there was a time I was going 15 times a day And normally I would be like wanting to reach for medication instead of just like, as you would say, stay hydrated, see how you feel tomorrow. And then tomorrow it was better again, you know, and you're like, this is your body's going to do what it needs. It's going to do. And I was like, okay, you know, so that was, I know it was a lot, but that's, yeah. And I think one thank thing that's the, I'm sorry, thank goodness for the testimonials hmm. because they prepped for that. Cause I was like, Oh, they had that too. That's right. It wasn't, you know what I mean? That, So that was very helpful. The testimonials were phenomenal. Yeah. One thing we talk about, and it's very important, is when you have the knowledge, there becomes an absence of fear because fear Mm -hmm. is just an absence of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's why we want to teach our clients. And that's why it's very important to, um, and we'll talk about this as well, like the difference between having some support and trying to do it on your own. But, um, oh, are you still with me? Yep. And so, oh, yeah, absolutely. yeah, sorry, it looked like you froze for a second. But um, when when you have that understanding about what's happening and, and 
why the body's creating these symptoms. It's so important to understand why the body's creating these symptoms because then you go, I know why this is happening. And yes, it doesn't always feel great, but I know why it's happening and it's, I know the purpose behind it. And so I can accept it. And I mentioned, I forgot to mention the biggest one, which was the weight loss mm. and dropping down to a hundred pounds. That was pretty <laughs> intense, you know? And, mm. uh, but again, reading about other people that experience the exact same thing. And there's a sense of like, it's, it's a journey, put your seatbelt on and get mm. ready for the ride. And mm. it's like, if you want your life back and you don't want to live, you know, and I know, I know many people that are, look, I'd rather have my colon taken out. Or I want to just, I'd rather, you know, continue to eat whatever I want. And it's a choice you just decide to make of like, no, I don't want to be on a biologic. And I, you know, I want to keep my colon. And I was like, there's got to be a way to do this. Has to be. Absolutely. So, there is. Thanks for saving, um, my, saving my colon. Yeah, absolutely. Um, talk about the program and, and the support aspect of it. Because when you can discuss the situation that you're in with somebody who's seen this with more than a thousand people now, what what did you find like if you tried to do it on your own compared to having the coaching? Oh goodness, uh, I would never not. I would always use the coaching. The book is great. The book is extremely draconian, and in many levels, stress inducing. Cause I was like, you can't do this. And if you do this, this, and, and I, I think you all are able to couch it in a way that's much more comfortable and palatable. And yeah, there's no, has it, I wouldn't for anyone who's read this book and you're like, this sounds great, but no way. I'm like, talk to them. And I've talked to my patients about this saying, talk to them. They'll, you really want that support because in the beginning, it feels very surreal because in the beginning, you're not even that hungry and you're like, how can I get this many calories? And, oh, I was obsessing so much about caloric intake and, oh my goodness. And, and, but you all were so great about like, look, we'll just use this app. You'll see what you're getting. We'll know what you're not. And there was a sense of like, you know, get some lab tests. We'll watch mm. for things, you know, and there's always going to be, I think, some some stumbling along the way so uh, i think as, as I, I tell my patients like recover and it's funny how i can tell them this but not myself i said <laughs> recovery is never linear mm. it's never linear. it's always a bit bumpy because that's just you'll make two steps forward one day maybe step back a little bit the next day but then just be patient and then the progress so it's the biggest thing with all of this is that you all provide that support where the most critical thing you need is patience. So, because it's not an overnight quick fix, it's not a pill. It's you're removing the things that may be impeding your healing, and the body has a timeline in the way that it wants to recover. So, can we give them a sense of timeline for them? Is that okay? Do you mind? Um, for you, yes. Ish? So, like, I mean, one thing we want to talk about today is Tom's journey is quite an exceptional one. But before we go into timeline, you're talking about diet and um, yes. how you had the app and how you're tracking everything. And I remember a discussion right. we had where I took you through, your, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd completed your diet for a few days or a week. And then we went through all the nutrients and you, you were wondering, how is this diet giving me so much nutrition and we went through all the different vitamins and the minerals and everything like that you know how did you what did you see when you kind of saw all of the different things you were getting it was really surreal like i'm so glad we did that hmm. because like there's no way they're like you're not getting your fat <laughs> and i was like i put in you know like and just as a quick comment it's not a diet it's a new lifestyle right and with the smoothie in the morning, I was like, I can't believe what I'm getting in the smoothie. Like, how is that? And you're like, it's an, it, you know, it's this, you're, it knows how much is in a banana. And I was like, okay. I, so yeah, I haven't mm. had a drop of oil in years mm. and it's most people. And again, I don't even bother telling people because they're like, oh, how are you alive? I'm like, <laughs> I'm seeing, I'm gained weight, doing fine. Again, I, I don't even try to convince other physicians because they mm. don't believe. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, even when the when the proof is staring them in the face, isn't it? It's, it's quite that. That's a surreal thing for me. Is like when the proof is literally staring you in the face and telling you that this is what happened to me, and you still don't believe it. Um, but okay, so uh, timeline. So Tom had a whole list of many different things that he was working on. Um, so his his healing took a little bit longer than what we would normally expect for most people. But the majority of clients, they're getting better within that six month period. But Tom, when did you start? Talk about when you start with us and then we can go from there. What, what I want to throw out for people is this is really interesting. And it's even in the book as well. There's like a rate of healing and some things accelerate that and some things mm. can slow it down. Mm. And because I had a complication from obviously related to COVID and other stuff, who knows what it was. I had to be on some prednisone for that. And in a way, and you said it right away, you're like, that's going to slow things down. Mm -hmm. And, but in a way, maybe for me, the slowing down for a while wasn't a bad thing. So but this is where if you, if, and not to you, this is way too early to say this, but if you're like, what would you tell someone? I was like, the rate of healing, if it's too fast, it can be slowed a bit. You know, and it's okay. And so I think the as I would even tell them my my regular patients, I'm like, you know, let's you've got to be able to get it's not a sprint, it's more of a fundamental marathon. And it could be a, a couple of months for you or longer, mm -hmm. but you have to be able to be comfortable getting through that. And therefore Absolutely. I would say, then let's slow down, you know, because from the book, it's like if you're just doing straight juices, it's really intense. But it may be just too much, you know what I mean. Yeah. So that yeah. I know it's a quick aside, but that we yeah. ended up had, it had to get slowed down for me in the middle. Had to, which, yeah. And you said that you're like I this this is not this is not failure. You're like we're just it's just slowing it. If and so I was if like, hey, let's get th yeah. If we had gone through the healing as fast as we possibly could have, it would have been dangerous for you. So we yes. had to control. We had to control the rate of healing to make it comfortable enough and safe enough that you wouldn't be ending up in a really bad place. Okay. I totally, and so, I, I, and then there was a discussion we had a lot along yeah, the way, a lot of different great. discussions around how do we control the pace of your healing? So it doesn't, it doesn't get really, really messy for you. And that's when at one point I went back in the Lialda and then slowly tapered the Lialda. And mm. and I you said, you're like, look, this isn't wrong. This isn't failure. This is, we're just turning the dial a bit. Mm. And you were, you were spot on. You really yeah, were. We're, like, we're flexible enough to use all the tools that we have available to us, right? Whether that's a dietary thing, whether that's, you know, right. all the different things, whether it's a medical option, like just because we're not fans of medicine for the for the rest of our life doesn't mean that there's no place for it and there's no options to use it when necessary to to solve a particular problem that we have you know it, it, it wasn't necessary that it had to be cold turkey like that wasn't you're like no it's let's use the tools we've got that work mm. with you and again it was the sense of this isn't a diet this is a lifestyle change so let's gradually taper so you're not like having you know a lot of symptoms that you can because you have to still work and it was fine mm. i never had to stop working everything was just a slow process and as long as i was in the mindset of like this is and you were saying look as long as you're seeing progress and it was the one week i remember it was like 7 bms a day and then it went to 6 bms a day and it was a slow and i was literally doing the average i was literally like trying to like over i was like i'm doing 6.2 bms a day and you're like <laughs> how does that compare to last week and you're like it's a little bit better and you're like it's the direction we're going mm. and so that was that was brilliant Really, slow, it was really, really. Good. There's, there's, you know, there's a lot of wisdom in some of these old sayings. You know, slow and steady wins the race. Slow and steady, yeah. yeah. Slow and steady. My granddad used to always tell me, "Shukul, slow and steady wins the race," and I always take that along with some of my work, especially when these kind of things with these kind of situations. I remember when I was doing the smoothies, and mm. I remember when I was still in a rough place, as I would do like maybe one date and maybe two, and I was like, "Oh, I'm like, oh, it's the dates that are giving me the diarrhea," and you would look at me like. It's not the dates. <laughs> you're right. Because it's like, no matter what you, is this in a way, it's sort of when you're, I'm sure everyone who has the mindset, probably like I do, you think, how should I put this? Some of it is the food, but some of it is whether it's two or three dates, 
but you just feel like, oh my God, what can I do to control this? And you're like, give it time. You know what I mean? In, in a sense. And now I have so many dates. It's just funny now. I'm like, doesn't matter. Dates. Yeah. And anyway, I talking about that. I never could have apples like, oh God. And anyway, but we'll talk about this later. You get the idea. Yeah. Well, I think we're kind of heading in that direction now because you you went through the the healing and you went through some of those normal symptoms that happen when you're healing and you you understood why they happened. So you accepted them for what they were. And then as time progressed, it wasn't linear, but you know, it got better and better. And I think you do want to talk about how long it took you um and then we can talk about how it, how you were able to kind of eat some of the things that you were petrified of there's two things i want to say because you were so helpful people should hear how great you were because i'm stressing out like oh this was a little more loose than last time and i'm like trying to like literally like mentally as a physician super analyze this and you'd be like stop thinking about what's coming out of you <laughs> and i thought that was brilliant I mean, I know that sounds so simple to say that, but again, I'm just like really analyzing what's in there and what's coming out. And you're like, just don't think, like, don't worry about that. Hmm. And I was like, that's stupid. And yeah. I know that sounds trivial, but you end up worrying like, oh, well, well, if this is a little looser today compared to yesterday and you're like, stop, don't, you know what I mean? And it's good to hear someone be like, you're, you're fine. You know, you need yeah, well, that. You, you can only control your inputs. I loved that. You said that, that was so great. You can't control this. Let it go. Mm -hmm. which does tie into the other comment I have to make is during this time, I really did learn a lot about mindfulness and meditation. Mm -hmm. And really, I'm sure as you always talk about in all of your, your coursework is the mental game does matter. Oh yeah. And I'm just saying, so you were a thousand percent right on that and learning to sort of laugh and being like, learning to kind of like, yeah, body's doing what it needs to do. And I know that's, it's, that's just such a different mindset of like, oh my God, I'm flaring. I'm just being like, <laughs> that's, you know, but when you've had it for so long, you just like, there's a lot of fear. There is. You know? So, yeah. so because we slowed it down and I think it's helpful people to hear this, that you're like, oh, this is really doable. And it gives people, cause I was like, oh, I'm, I'll be fixed in a week, two weeks. 22 months, mm -hmm. but I am so proud of those 22 months. You have no idea. Oh my God. And, you know, walking every day and it's been now six months off medication. Mm -hmm. And I've been on Lyalda since 2008. Mm -hmm. So my entire forties, I was on Lyalda, my entire forties. And to not be on Lyalda, it felt like, walking a tightrope without a net i'm like mm -hmm. how how can i be off meds and that's really spooky when you've been on it for so long and how does that feel as a as a doctor as well because you know a lot of your training would be around that like, especially for these kind of diseases that like you cannot get off your meds otherwise you know and then to not be on them and and to be thriving without them how does that make you feel well i mean my gi doc hasn't contacted me yet be, because there's it i would say honestly that they think that i'm ha, probably have very poor judgment like they're probably gonna say look if you're not taking lyalda you're gonna flare and that's it that's what they're gonna say. you're gonna flare and we're gonna have to put you on on uh, the biologics hmm. and i'm like how long and they'll, they'll be like well you've got to, so that's my philosophy i'm like well let's see how long that let's see how long i go you know, like, okay, um, mm. like we can talk about maybe a follow-up colonoscopy, but that's a separate issue. So yeah. that's, yeah, the perspective is, I even spoke to some people about this and there's, there's this, probably that I'm some incredible fluke. Like mm. there's no way. Yeah. There's no way. This doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And that's why we want, we're so, you know, these, these stories are so important because if there was just one odd story like this and, and you know, or there's just only Shamiza's story, oh, that's just a fluke. But now there's a there's 150 of them almost, yeah. you know, and, and, and every time it's, you know, it's just more and more proof. Like each case study is, is proof, you know, and, and, you know, that's that's why it's so important that we document all these cases is that you can show hey, this is not a fluke. This is working for, you know, so many different people, young people, old people, different races, different ethnicities, you know, different sexes. It's just all the 
you know, like you can't say, like you look through all the different people that we work with, you can't say, oh, there's a trend here that it only works for, you know, Indian people who are in their twenties, like Shamiz was, you know, yeah. yeah. Cause I'm, cause I'm, because I'm in my fifties and I was like, well, it won't work for people in their fifties. No way. Mm-hmm. Really? I'm like, oh, Same. only when you're young and you can, you have great healing when you're young or something like, you know, absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. So now the next thing we you mentioned, and that's a great kind of segue from where you were at. So now you've kind of like healed your body and you you were so scared of eating certain things. Talk about those things that you're scared of eating and that you just thought, if I eat this, it's going to be the end of me compared to what you're able to do now. I would describe that uh, eating raw carrots has made me like laugh out loud. <laughs> oh my goodness. Just surreal. And, but I know that the healing process is probably still going on. And um, because it's only been six months off meds. And I know, so I love that with your program, you have a nice sequence. Like you wouldn't say start eating raw carrots right away because you're still not healed yet. Because in a way, it's not that, let me just sort of rephrase this. The process, it's, it's, there's two parts. One is to get out of the body's way, to let things heal in a way. And then once things are healed, because, you know, it's, it's, it's like a cut that's first healed now. You can't like, if you hit the, when you first have a wound and you hit it really hard, it's, it's still like getting stronger. And so for me, I know that if I push a little too hard and get too excited, which I end up doing, and mm-hmm. having like, you know, I'll eat like I eat for a while for even a few weeks ago, I was eating like five, six, seven carrots a day. <laughs> and it was great. But then all of a sudden I was like, oh, I think it's a, maybe a little much. And, and then I learned I, you have a beautiful way of like, go back to this, just have cooked vegetables for a while and then introduce it again. So there's a beautiful like dial, like cut it back a bit, let it heal some more and then go back up again. Mm-hmm. So that's what it's like. And I, even since I was a kid, I could never eat apples. Like apples always gave me diarrhea always in pears. And today, like I, I'm eating apples and pears and it's just, it, I'm sitting going, this is impossible. Oh, this is low FODMAP. And you're like, yeah, your microbiome is so different now that it's not an issue. Mm. So that's, what's all been so strange. Like, and I have to tell you eating like some carrot and lettuce and cucumber is mind blowingly delicious just that oh my god it really is yeah especially when you couldn't eat any of that stuff for such a long time i mean i mean yeah i I can't even imagine just eating bananas tuna and bread for how however long you were eating it for years yeah it's just yeah i mean yeah you think changing your diet is hard just trading that for (laughs) that much time you know and i really don't and it's funny because i i have a massive smoothie every day, which mm. I never thought the volume of my smoothie is like a liter plus. And I, when I would watch you all, I'm like, there's no way I'm going to have to take a liter down. And you're like, oh, you can. Like, it <laughs> just becomes like, once that becomes your mindset of like every morning, like I don't even, I can do it unconsciously. Like I know exactly what I put in every time. And it's like every day. And I, re- I just, and it's not like, Oh, I have to do this. I'm like, I like it's great. And I don't miss really anything that I'm not having. Like I don't mm. miss it's everything's it, it's not a diet. Like I, I I can I'm good with this. This is fine. This is great. Mm-hmm. To have your That's life good. back, how much is yeah. that worth? How much is that worth? Absolutely. And I mm. and I think we can kind of um because we're kind of running out of time a little bit, but let's just talk about what your life is like and some of the advice that you'd like to give people that are watching this from a, not only from a personal level, from, from a, from a medical level, from, from this, from the mindset of a physician. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on, on what your life is like now and what you'd like to tell people who are watching. I would tell them that, yes, this is, feels very different from what, standard Western medicine is. And I, I totally understand that, which is when, let's, when I talked to the, to the GI docs about what I was experiencing, how I was incontinent and I had mucus issues. And they said to me, and I went to like five different GI docs and they said, you need to learn to live with this. Mm. 
and you have scar tissue there, you're going to be incontinent. And there was a sense of like, this can't be right. And all I can tell people is to get, to not have to wear, you know, protection from having accidents and mucus coming out. I mean, I always, I've had mucus coming out of me for a decade. And I just thought that was, I didn't know what it was in the beginning. It was really scary. I'm like, okay, I guess this is the way it's going to be now. So I guess my recommendation would be given as compared to losing your colon and other issues like this that are so extreme, you only have one colon ever. And to give this a try to just say, like, why not a year, six months to a year, not that it'll ever be that long of like, let me try this because if this works, I get my life back. And yes, there's always going to be trade-offs. Like I would say, if you're like, I have to have meat and I have to have eggs, I, I there's always trade-offs in life. And I was willing, I would eat ear of newt if that's what would give me my life back. And I would say in the program itself, as a physician, I may have been a little too cavalier, is get your meds checked. I mean, I'm sorry, not your meds checked. Get your labs checked, excuse me. You're, that matters. And I was like, oh, labs, everything's fine. You're like, no, this is very different from your body. And you really do want to make sure that levels are where you want, that your sodium's where you want it, that you're not getting extremely anemic, that you're not getting super dehydrated. It, it's it's better safe than sorry. Get your labs checked. Okay. And have patience that, you know, we may have, this is the classic, and I wish I had learned this years ago. We somehow have a magical preconceived notion of what it's supposed to be like, of how fast this should heal versus letting your body do its thing to whatever timeline that might be. Mm. But if you see improvement, then just hang on and see it not as like a diet, but see it as like, it's a new different lifestyle. And I mean, that's what I would recommend. Um, and if it feels like it's too much, that the process can be like a dial, turn it down a little bit, like maybe temporarily go back on the low dose of your meds. If that just allows you to feel a bit better to stick with this. Mm. So, I mean, that's, again, it's still, I still, part of me still doesn't believe this. And really, I, I, it may take a very long time because, you know, 15 years is a long time, but not being on Lyalda and waking up, not having abdominal pain is very weird and bloating and going like, that's a, that feels flat, you know, but then not mm. freaking out. It may be a day where it feels a little achy and you're like, you know, then that's, it's, it's a new way to see things. So I, you, I'm so grateful for you all to help me see things in a different way. So very grateful. Yeah, absolutely. Mate. Did a, did an amazing job and yeah, I mean, to to go through what you went through, it wasn't just colitis. I mean, we, we didn't get to touch on some of the other issues because we we're focusing mostly on on the gut, sure. you know, like heart inflammation and and other things that you had to kind of overcome along the way as well. Um, it's it's full credit to you. Um, I'm exceptionally honored to be part of your journey. Very, very proud of you. And, um, you know, full, fully congratulations. You know, my favorite part of the show is, Dr. T, you now have a life after colitis. Congratulations. I, I, you, I am so grateful beyond words. I cannot thank you enough, truly. Fantastic. Well, hey, you guys, uh, I hope you found that inspirational. I have been inspired working with Dr. T for the last uh, almost uh, two years, and uh, it's, been, it's been a real pleasure. And for you guys watching and listening to this show, uh, I hope you've learned something from 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 Dr. T and his journey. And if you're watching this on YouTube or you're listening to this on the podcast, please subscribe to the channel so that you get notified of all our testimonials and other videos that we're going to be uh, producing in the future. If you haven't given this video a like, please do so because it helps us reach more people. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below in the comment section and we'll get to it as best as we can. Apart from that, for everyone watching and listening, I hope you have a good day and make sure that you eat plants and lots of them. You take care.